It's The Real News. I'm Darna Noor. California just made it legal for municipalities to start public banks, and LA City Council just said they're going to propose creating one. Last week, Governor Gavin Newsom signed the state's Public Banking Act, which allows city and county officials to sponsor public banks. Unlike private banks, which are corporations and are therefore obligated to maximize profits, supporters say public banks could be tied to policy to make room to invest in things like affordable housing and renewable energy, and help smaller businesses by offering significantly lower interest rates. The legislation was backed by a majority of California lawmakers, environmental justice groups, labor unions, and the Democratic Party. But it had powerful opponents, like Wall Street. With that big hurdle cleared on Monday, Los Angeles' city council president said he'll be proposing establishing the city's first public bank. Now joining me to discuss this is David Jetty, who is the co-founder and legislative director of Public Bank LA. Thanks so much for being here, David. Uh, thank you very much for having uh, me. Uh, so could you just uh, start by explaining how exactly this bill, it's Assembly Bill 857, uh, works exactly? So how, how did this get proposed in the first place? Um, and what exactly does it allow California municipalities to do? Right. Um, well, the bill itself uh, was put forward by uh, Miguel Santiago and David Chu of Los Angeles and San Francisco, respectively. Uh, these two legislators uh, were brave enough to sign on to a bill that um, that had been uh, developed by the California Public Banking Alliance, a uh, coalition of uh, city and county level public bank uh, advocacy groups, grassroots groups like uh, like Public Bank LA um, uh, here in LA and uh, East Bay uh, Public Bank and, and SF Public Bank in San Francisco. Um, this was a, a piece of legislation that uh, we devised as a way to uh, get past some of the hurdles, especially the legal hurdles, uh, but also some of the sort of classification and registration issues of public banks. Um, that we were finding in our city efforts. So uh, when a city like Los Angeles looks into whether or not they can start a bank, uh, like we did here in LA, uh, there are uh, you know limitations on city governments. There are limitations on banks themselves that caused certain conflicts in law. And AB 857 clears some of those paths. It defines public banks as purely publicly owned entities, not as public private partnerships or anything like that. Uh, and it also limits their activities to be um, for uh, a specific social purpose and uh, in a way that, that ensures that they're good stewards of public money. Uh, at its heart, it sets a framework for what cities uh, should do and can do when it comes to starting their own banks. And because of that sort of democratic control, it makes a lot of sense that you all had a pretty broad coalition that backed this effort. Um, but I'd also love if you could talk a bit about uh, the, the opposition that y'all faced. I mean, I hear that obviously Wall Street isn't thrilled that this passed. Um, and in the spring, a spokesperson for the California Banking Association said that this bill was misguided and that, quote, with nearly 200 banks serving the state of California, there is much choice in the current marketplace. California banks are also tremendous partners to the many community organizations that operate in the regions where they do business. Uh, and when the bill was in committee, the California Association of County Treasurers and Tax Collectors came out against it too. Um, they said, quote, this legislation creates a false sense of hope for proponents who have been repeatedly advised that county pools cannot be used for these purposes and that critical statutory protections of local dollars cannot be lightly dismissed. Could you just respond uh, briefly to these critiques that this was uh, mis misguided or unnecessary in some way? Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's it's always funny when people bring forward um, uh, an argument that we should not have a public option in banking or let's say other areas like healthcare because there is already so many choices. There are so many choices already. Um, it's it's pretty clear when you do uh, the research that there are uh, large numbers of folks in California who are uh, unbanked or underbanked, meaning they don't have access or affordable access to basic financial services that a lot of people do enjoy. Services like being able to uh, deposit their paycheck uh, in a bank account without having to pay a fee, uh, which is effectively a tax on the use of money itself. Um, I mean, a lot of debt serves as a tax on the use of money itself. And that tax is, is levied by a, a private entity, uh, and usually a, a bank or some kind of investor who's charging for access to credit uh, and to money itself. Uh, those taxes lead to billion-dollar uh, profits. 
multi-million or billion dollar bonuses for executives and, and major shareholders of banks. And uh, we believe that money is a public utility. Uh, it's something that has value because we all give it value and because we can pay our taxes with it. And that means that the root of uh, of, of the meaning of money really comes to the fore when you're talking about the government's money. Uh, when we pay taxes, we put that money into a bank account. And uh, once it goes there, the bank can use it to leverage uh, all of their assets to make loans. And those loans can go into any number of investments, but they tend to go into the most profitable sectors. Uh, a public bank will allow the government to choose a bank account that will increase investment here in Los Angeles, in the case of, of our city and all over California uh, for banks formed under AB 857. That is not a choice they currently have. Uh, right now, their choices are banks which uh, violate uh, federal law uh, in in uh, you know, in the case of Wells Fargo or state wage uh, theft laws in the case of J.P. Morgan Chase. And when assessing their options, uh, cities should take those things into account. Um, we should not give public business to entities which uh, violate the law uh, or fund businesses or industries which extract um, you know the hard-earned dollars of working people or resources uh, that can lead to you know, environmental catastrophe. Yeah, so talk about what kinds of investments you would like to see, um, you know, both uh, you specifically in Los Angeles and then you know, across the entire state. Um, what kinds of investments are possible now that you don't think would have been possible under uh, a Wells Fargo or a J.P. Morgan? Right. Uh, well, there's there's a lot of ideas, uh, but in, in its heart, we need to, when rolling out, an institution as important as a bank of this scale, one that we mean to pass on for many generations um, uh, into the future. We, we wanna make sure that we do it right and that we keep things focused on uh, what is possible right away. Um, I wish that we could just decarbonize our economy mm -hmm. with public bank overnight. Uh, but the reality is um, we're probably going to start a bank that uh, lowers the borrowing costs for the city uh, as a first step, right? Refinancing debt is one way to lower the money costs that the city has, which can uh, raise revenues for cities or you know or lower expenses and lower that tax burden for working people people. Um, but uh, in a much more uh, uh, forward step, uh, sort of a front footed way, we absolutely could be increasing lending to affordable housing projects here in the city. Obviously, we have a homelessness crisis in Los Angeles County and city. And um, there's a lot of reasons for it. But lack of affordable credit for especially programs that wouldn't just uh, put up housing that would make money for developers, but housing that could be owned and controlled by its tenants uh, or uh, inure to the benefit of those local communities. Um, banks don't like lending to those projects quite as much because you know, there isn't some large developer that they can underwrite in order to lend that money. Right. But a public bank can look at its people as a worthy borrower. Uh, it has a lot more touch points with regular citizens and with local institutions like neighborhood councils and things like that, where it can be a lot more imaginative in the lending structures that can emerge. So uh, when you're talking about a, a, an affordable housing project, you could have a community land trust borrow on a 50-year mortgage with a very, very low rate with the explicit purpose of keeping rents low. These are the kind of financial structures that a public bank makes possible. Yeah, it sounds like the sort of two um, big priorities that have come out of this movement are um, that move toward more affordable housing in the face of such a huge homelessness crisis, and then also financing the transition away from fossil fuels. That also seems like kind of the other uh, biggest priority that's been uh, mentioned the most. Um, which, I mean, makes sense because these kinds of uh, public banks like nonprofits are, you know, accountable to boards. Um, but the only public bank in the country right now is the Bank of North Dakota, which was established way back in 1919. And in 2016, of course, that bank lent millions of dollars to local law enforcement to fund their infamous uh, violent response to protests around the Standing Rock Reservation uh, against the Dakota Access Pipeline. So talk about how Californians can hold these public banks accountable and really make sure that, you know, that the things that are being financed are things that benefit uh, most people in California and, and uh, more broadly, the nation and the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Bank of North Dakota is obviously a, a very interesting case and uh, and one that we look to very frequently in terms of 
finding an American perspective on what a public bank might look like. But we also, when we set out uh, on on you know helping to craft AB 857 and supporting it in its way through the legislature was to prevent uh, the state and uh, frankly you know some of the larger let's say executive offices uh, in the state from capturing that process and trying to make this purely a state bank uh, one that's ruled by you know a particular board of appointed officials or the, even the governor themselves uh, the way that it would be in North Dakota. Uh, we wanted local and municipal public banks because they're, we think they're gonna be a lot more responsive to democracy uh, and to the needs of regular people, right? City Hall deals in potholes. Uh, they deal in property taxes. Uh, they are necessarily on the ground. And in the case of LA, on a lot of frontline communities in terms of climate change and economic inequality. So our job through the writing of the bill was to make sure that we stayed independent of those uh, efforts and we we did. There were no paid lobbyists on our side pushing this through. Uh, we never received any advice or or money from real estate developers or um, or any kind of energy company uh, or even even nonprofit financials. Right, this is a grassroots uh, a grassroots effort and it has to stay that way. Um, we are going to work really hard here in LA to make sure that the selection process for the experts that help formulate a business plan are chosen from our community as much as possible and have the best interest of that community at heart. And that's going to go all the way through the selection of executives, board members, and the loan portfolio that this bank eventually adopts. That credit policy needs to be politicized. It needs to be put in front of everyday people, and that's how you're going to keep it accountable, not through rules or through choosing the perfect bank president, by, but by exposing those inner workings on a constant basis to sunshine. So obviously you're working on creating a public bank in Los Angeles. Uh, LA Assembly member uh, Miguel Santiago was a joint author of the state's public banking act. On Monday, LA City Council President Herb Vesson said that he will be filing a motion to establish a public bank in LA. Uh, and I know that there's also similar uh, efforts underway in San Francisco, for instance, uh, and that this legislation removes a big hurdle for, uh, you know, these municipalities. So what actually has to happen now to create these public banks? Uh, and, and what else are you expecting to uh, see along the way in terms of, uh, you know, pushback? Well, uh, here in L.A., um, our city council president, Herb Wesson, just announced that the city uh, will consider and, and hopefully pass uh, an RFQ, a request for qualifications, for um, sort of a quarterback in the in the city council's office to lead uh, what will probably be the formation of a business plan and an application to the Department of Business Oversight, which is the bank regulator here in California. Uh, we're going to need to get that plan approved by the city council, and it will probably go through an extensive public review process, which is the process that I mentioned that we should all be showing up for to demand that um, that the priorities that we know need to be built into this bank are, are in fact written into its founding documents and its application to regulators. Uh, from there, that regulator is going to have to look at that application and determine whether it's satisfactory, another process that also uh, should be looked at closely by by the people. And eventually, you know, the, the FDIC will probably have to take a look at this. And uh, obviously that, that puts an extra weight um, as if we didn't need any more on the outcome of the presidential election. So uh, this is tied in with all the same efforts for affordable housing, for racial justice, for climate justice as all of us are working for. And we need to make sure that public bank uh, public banks are on the lips of everyone that is out there talking to uh, voters and to activists to make sure they know this is coming down the pike, especially if they live in California. And if they live elsewhere, you know, have your local legislators talk to uh, Assembly Member Chu and Santiago, have them call us and and get a bill like AB 857 moving, because in the next five years, we're going to see uh, some of these banks models to follow. We hope that we do well for you so that you have something to copy and, and can succeed. Yeah. Uh, so I, I guess I want to finish up by asking you about, you know, how you think that this could sort of lay the groundwork for other places. Um, you know, New York City has a public bank coalition. They're pushing for similar kinds of legislation. Um, there's other, you know, sort of coalitions that have popped up in, in D.C. and Seattle. How do you hope that uh, this could influence the fight for public banks outside of California? Yeah, well, a win is always good for everyone on this side, right? And and victory has many mothers. Um, so I think 
uh, just the legitimization of public banking in this century uh, is a huge step. Um, this, the fact that we got through the Banking and Finance Committee in two houses of a major state legislature, the the local government committees, um, uh, right, all of these experts, right, legislative experts signed off and said that what we're doing is prudent. And over time, I think that the treasurers are going to come around and see that our proposals are in the best interest of the public and and you know they're working for that same thing and eventually you know even some members of the California Banking Association are going to see that increased economic growth is good for their businesses right and you know frankly this bill limits public banks from competing with them too much so they're going to have a pretty valuable new partner especially those credit unions and, and community banks that actually care about their their neighborhoods and, and the peop the places where their employees and their uh, customers live they're going to have a new partner that they can work with that doesn't want to steal their customers and wants uh, their local economies to grow and eventually they'll be for it and eventually eventually they'll think it was always uh, meant to be and uh, and people will act like well of course public banks exist um, but that only comes from everyone kind of uh, working together and trying to find realistic ways forward that can be sustainable yeah i can't wait till the day that the california banking association says this was their idea all along um, yeah. well as you uh, you know continue to uh, you know fight for uh, the creation of the public bank in los angeles and uh, you know we continue to see how this legislation unfolds now that it passed uh, we'd love to to talk to you again, David Jetty, co-founder and legislative director of Public Bank LA. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, thanks, Steve. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, but do us one more solemn favor. Hit the subscribe button below. You know you want to. Stay up on the videos.